Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the wonderful game of Heroes Hour, an auto-battling game of epic proportions. Now, this game has been developed lovingly for several years, so as you can imagine, the developers have created a perfectly balanced game with no exploits at all. The world is just and fair, no game-breaking advantages possible. Okay, maybe just a few. Okay, maybe a lot. So today it is time for me, a classically evil British bugger and professional video game exploiter, to show you how how to truly become a god amongst gamers, as we're going to play the hardest possible game of Heroes Hour possible and destroy its balance completely. So let us create our new game. We're going to be playing on an absolutely sprawling map, on the hardcore plus difficulty with as many negative modifiers turned on as possible. So let's begin this seemingly impossible game. Now welcome into the game ladies and gentlemen, we start with the legendary city of Iskilgard, led and defended by the wonderful Gunvor stonemason. He's a fantastic being because he can do two wonderful things. Summon dragons out of thin air and eat anything. Yes, that's right. Just like your average American, Gunvor here can consume any living being in order to absorb its energy and power. This is what makes Gunvor so damn jazzy. And it's why in today's video, we're going to be following the specific design exploit philosophy of CUCK. The famous acronym of course stands for consume, upgrade, consume, and kill. This this is the design philosophy that we're going for. Now, luckily for us, the dwarves have a few unique abilities. Namely, we're able to use runes and hire a large quantity of dwarven mercenaries, the likes of which will allow us to secure an early and safe start where we're able to grab a hold of all of our necessary resource extractors, which is a process that, whilst might not necessarily seem that challenging, is surprisingly impossible in this difficulty because, yes, it's just a nightmare. The game at this level is incredibly hard. Everything is horrifically overpowered, there are more enemies, the enemies hit harder, they spawn faster. If we are not fast enough, the enemy AI will simply just overwhelm us before we're able to even get into the fourth week. Consequently, we must prepare and grow stronger than they can ever imagine. This is why we're picking up the Dragon King perk. The Dragon King perk means that we're going to gain experience to just summoning a red dragon out of thin air every time we do a fight. This is a wonderful advantage. Now, when I say we're playing on all of the hardest difficulty settings possible, I really mean it. To demonstrate just how insane this game is, I've done this test game right here, whereby I haven't exploited the game and I've just played it relatively normally on the hardest difficulty setting and oh would you look at that, the AI has already arrived, this is the largest army I could conceivably muster and of course it's not going to stand up to them, oh we've just been evaporated. Yes ladies and gentlemen, this is an impossible challenge. However, I'm an impossible being to balance. So let's go destroy this game. Now our first week has gone by with pretty much no combat whatsoever and the reasoning is very simple. Our units are incredibly weak at this level and will just get absolutely curb stomped by the AI if we're not careful. Consequently, we are careful, very, very careful indeed. Now the dwarves have one very incredible unit and no, it's not their late game power level 28 white yeti. It is their base level miner who is incredibly powerful for one key reason. Unlike Google, Amazon or Starbucks, he's a taxpayer, which means for every day that we have each miner, we get two gold per its power level. In this case, that means for each lovely miner we have, we get four gold per day. They are incredibly useful for that exact reason. Anyway, now with our upgraded army, it's time for us to secure some of our other resource generators. So this sawmill is going to be ours. Oh, and yes, their army is no match for ours. Lovely, we will stomp them, we will murder them, and we will upgrade our Dragon King skill. Fantastic. Next up, it's down here to also absolutely massacre another AI army. Fantastic. We'll grab the obelisk and this little treasure chest. Now, pretty much every other nearby combat that we can do is massively, horrifically overpowered against us. I mean, just look at these guys. There's a stack of potentially five to ten dragons down there. I am not able to beat five to ten dragons. I'm able to get pummeled to death by five to ten dragons, but that's not exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, we've got another big fight against the AI. This one is, yes, rather terrifying. However, I believe it is just the right quantity of power that we are looking for. However, this is a very critical mine, which will massively improve our economy, and consequently is something we absolutely have to have access to. Anyway, I'm going to buff up all of my lovely dudes, make them jazzy and more powerful, and charge down the enemy, and oh dear, this isn't going very well at all. Well, luckily we can bring in a wave of crossbow people to hopefully overwhelm the enemy forces, or, or just get overwhelmed by the enemy forces. You know, one of those two, actually. Really, just whatever 
whatever you're feeling like, I guess. Anyway, this fight is gonna get very, very close, but luckily, due to the dwarven ability to summon rock pummelers whenever a dwarven unit dies, we should hopefully still ever so slightly just clinch a victory. Yep, we did win, uh, we did lose our entire army in order to do it, however, we got a mine in the process, and that is worth it. All right, I've upgraded a huge amount of our army and grown it out, and now we just need to take control of this wonderful sulfur mine, because this will allow us to gain some of our more late game units and also you know we're able just to do a nice decent bit of damage thankfully a few of our units are now very very high level these fantastic gold earthens simply do not die they have midas touch as well so they can turn enemy units into gold which we can make into money when they die they just simply respawn after the battle we also have a whole bunch of these wonderful caribou elites which gain health based off of the quantity of nearby allies that die which as you can imagine could make them relatively very hard to kill anyway a good battle has been had we only lost three units in total and gained a whole bunch of experience, so that's a win for everyone. Right, now I'm going to send my lovely army off now that I've improved it a bunch to try and gain control of the nearby crystal mine, and after we have that- Oh wait, hang on, that's an enemy army! What? What? They're just sieging my capital immediately! You utter bar- It's like week two! What is this? What is this game? Like, I've literally only just gotten here and you're just immediately starting to kill my dudes. Okay, and you're level 13! The A- okay, Extreme Hardcore plus AI is, uh, unsurprisingly, Extreme Hardcore. And they're just stealing my economy, of course you are. Of course you're stealing my economy. Right, well, I'm going immediately back in and stealing my city. It was incredibly rude of the game to try and steal my men from me. Luckily, it's not too difficult for me to just break down the walls to my old previous home, but jeez, guys, this was- I can't believe that they're just able to stroll in and steal my city. Now, I have deliberately made the game more challenging for myself because, you know, even though Hardcore Plus is difficult, I would also like to only limit myself to one commander, because I think that's a fun challenge. Anyway, a new week begins, and if that red army stays nearby to us, of course they're coming in to fight us! I was like, oh, if that army stays close to us, we can always just beat it up and, you know, murder them, but no, they're just gonna come waltzing straight on in, that's fine, great for them. Right, I want my ranged boys up front. You've got this ranged boys, you're gonna do great. Okay, right, let's start this battle. Defend the walls, my men. Well, this is it, the great defense of our capital city and well uh, we're getting attacked by a whole bunch of horrible horrible units and our spells aren't exactly going to be very very good at all. I will however give first strike to most of our range units to hopefully increase their damage output but oh my goodness they're just flooding straight in. Right, well, I'm also going to get copies of all of our golden earthens as those copies will hopefully also gain their immortal traits and advantages. At the same time we need a bit of bloodlust to get all of our units going and trying to defend this gap that we have to try and work our way out of. And also now it's time for our troops to move on to the offensive and try and get out there. Oh my goodness, also the piggies that are pushing for our front lines are now doing incredible quantities of damage. This is very annoying. Oh my goodness, they've just summoned an absolutely astronomical quantity of crossbowmen. Right, we need to cleave our way through all of this. We are definitely on the offensive now and it is looking like we should actually potentially win this. I don't think they've necessarily got many more reinforce- oh, they've got more reinforcements. Well, it's fine. Look, we're doing decent progress. We're doing more damage than they can potentially output. Some of our units are getting back up and continuing the fight. This is a potential victory, okay? All right, go on, my great men, go. Push, you glorious golden elementals. Turn my enemy into money. And actually, we've done this. They're down to just like 10 units. <gasps> we defeated the impossible AI. Oh my god goodness, it only cost me, like, most of my military, but we didn't even what week of poverty. A new week has begun, and we've gained some new units, but our towns no longer make money. What? You can't be serious, game. You can't be serious. No. That's just actually horrible. Okay, well, uh, problem with that, we are now poor forever. Great. Now, I've had as many units as I can, and, well, there's no gold mines nearby for us to occupy. We know that the enemy are somewhere to our north, and that they were able to absolutely blow Blitz the way across the map via this direction. And they've also stolen my wood mine. So I will take that bad boy back. Now let's go see if we can find that gold mine of mine. No, we've just got loads of giant stacks of instant death. A few moments later. Experience dragon. <gasps> yes, okay, after that last auto-resolve fight, we've just been able to get our first dragon. This is wonderful. Dragons, as you can imagine, very, very powerful creature. Our highest level creature that we can recruit is a power 12, has 172 health and does 16 damage. A dragon, however, is power level 80, has 646 health and does 38 damage. They are much, much, much more powerful. Okay, found this fantastic fight here, which if we can manage to win will give us not only 
more money, but also more creatures in our cities, which we desperately need. Now, one unit we can bring out here is our Red Dragon, which is immensely powerful, and I will actually bring it out because I have one very important thing I need it to do. I need it to charge at the enemy, kill as many as it can, and then as soon as it starts to die, that's completely fine. All right, go on, you lovely dragon. It has taken a little bit of damage already, but it is just a big old powerful boy that just does huge quantities of damage, cleaving its way through the enemy. Very, very good stuff indeed. We will have to send out some reinforcements, but that's completely fine. Everyone needs to send out reinforcements now and again. And well, bam, our dragon is doing lovely. However, our dragon, uh, yes, will probably survive this fight. However, I don't necessarily want it to. For you see, our devour skill is what we're ultimately after. And the devour skill is an incredible thing indeed. Basically, based off of the sacrifice unit's power level, our lovely hero is going to gain some statistics and attributes. In our case, the statistics and attributes we're interested in are that of our dragon, which is about to die, so we need to devour it. I'm sorry, dragon, my friend. You've been great, but I want your statistics. And now it's time for Science with Spit. Everyone's favorite section where I explain how the game is intended to be played and how we're absolutely destroying it. So, ladies and gentlemen, what is the Devour skill? The Devour skill is a spell that you can cast once per day in a battle, and it allows you to consume a portion of your army in order to give your hero temporary buffs, and if the consumed units are powerful enough, potentially permanent stat increases. The logic is very simple. The more powerful a creature you consume, the more benefits you're going to get from it. However, the skill itself is incredibly weak. You can consume quite a large amount of your most expensive high tier units and you might only go up one or two stats. However, this makes the skill very, very balanced indeed. You can't break the game with it, you might get an advantage with it, but it's going to cost you a lot in order to do it. However, ladies and gentlemen, this skill is completely and utterly wanged out of proportion when you start adding in the Dragon King ability. Being able to print red dragons, the strongest unit in the game, is absurdly powerful on its own, but then being able to eat the strongest unit in the game and give yourself an insane quantity of permanent stat boosts, now that is absurdly broken and definitely not what the developer intended. So the dragon is murdered, we get to bring in some reinforcements, honestly we might not win this fight and that's okay, I really do hope we do win this fight, however there's a whole bunch of very angry cyclopses and oh my a whole bunch of ranged boys just spawned in. Well you have my luck and I hope you can clear out all of the rangers. But yes, our fantastic hero general has just inherited a whole bunch of statistics from the dragon that he just consumed. Don't ask me how Governor is able to eat an entire dragon, but life finds a way. And the way is probably somehow involving a nice, warm, refreshing cup of tea and some barbecue sauce. So after this fight, we make some money, we make some experience, we lost a dragon, we lost most of our army, but Governor leveled up. Very, very nice indeed. We are going to upgrade our Dragon King level, and we'll also upgrade our Estates level. Fantastic. And after that fight, Governor, you'll notice, just went up a whole bunch of experience. He gained 7 points in defense and 7 points in attack. This is very, very nice. That means all of our troops just gained a 21% boost to their attack and health stats, which as you can imagine for many of our troops is incredibly valuable indeed. Anyway, that's that fight completed. Yes, it cost us a lot of our resources, but ultimately it should be worth it. Right, and fantastic, that's an end to week 4, and wonderfully that means we can now start making money from our towns again. We've also gained the wonderful skill book of Earth and Gods, which allows us to just simply deploy an army somewhere on the map just to kind of bog up and slow down any opposition we have. It will make it harder for the enemy AIs to actually occupy some of our locations, so ultimately that's very valuable to us. At the same time, I'm going to recruit more and more of our amazing late game units and get them ready for combat because I want to take control of this crystal mine. It is deservedly mine, and so I want it. And I've recruited the largest army I can must, so consequently we're heading on over to this obelisk, which should be a nice and easy fight, just a good way of gaining some experience and dragon power and we get to loot this chest for some glorious goodies. Okay, this giant mine over here, yes, it does have a dragon, but I think we can still take it. Yes, it's looking good. Okay, they've got two dragons here. I don't mind. I've got Governor. Governor's now level 10. He has 175 health and does 13 damage. This is superior to what he was previously at. So, Governor, take it away, my friend. Let us go try and face a foe on the glorious field of battle. And at the same time, hopefully we can evaporate these green dragons before they cause any problems. These are Thanatos. not quite 
quite as good as a red dragon, they're only power level of 28, but they do have a few advantages. They're undead, they are evil, and they are green. I don't really particularly know if that is a beneficial advantage, but it is a difference. Nonetheless, this is an easy fight, and the crystal mine is finally ours. All it cost us was free, very, very expensive units. And after that fight, we are just one more fight away from being able to unlock ourselves an additional dragon, which honestly would be a massive benefit. Okay, we've also unlocked all of our late game magic, which is very, very useful indeed. Going to send my wonderful lord here to go and pick up all of his late game magic bonuses, restock up with as many troops as he can carry, and then we're going to send him off over here to try and deal with this AI army that's wandering around. Going after this uh, stack of men here, it shouldn't be too difficult, yep, they're no match for us, so we'll murder them. Only lost a handful of units, which is glorious stuff, and that is one more red dragon added to our list. This is fantastic. All right, there is a lovely AI-led army down here, just rammed with as much wildlife as possible, so consequently we can farm it for fantastic experience gains, which is exactly what we're going to do. Come back, neutral army, I want your loot! Oh, actually, this isn't quite as smart a fight as I thought it was going to be. Well, still, I'm going to absorb the power of this red dragon this fight, whether the game likes it or not. And I'm also going to use my lovely immortal golden boys to make as much money as possible. So in you go, lovely red dragon. Make me some cash. Oh my goodness, he is doing a fantastic job of just running around and exploding. Oh, these poor little snout hogs. Not exactly designed for what we're doing. Oh, because they've just spawned in even more snout hogs. Of course they have. There's just an endless quantity of them. And now it's... In come the penguins. And would you look at all of the gold on the map we've created. Wonderful. This is glorious profit for us. Every single unit we've turned to gold is money. So consequently the fight is going very very well indeed. And yet we're starting to see the final wave coming on out now. And with that, yep, it looks like it is mass retreat for the entire enemy army. They have given up. So we are going to devour our dragon in this glorious moment of opportunity. Eat the entire thing and turn it into pure power. Well, bam, there we go. Money made from the fight, 700 gold, but ultimately we hardly lost anything of value. We gained 30,000 experience. I'm going to level up our combat ability, as well as my Soul of the Earth ability, and we're bam, we're already 50% of the way to the next Red Dragon, as well as also our stats have just been boosted up even more. Gunvor is now up to 29 defense and 25 attack. I up to an 87% boost to health and like a 70 something percent boost to attack, which means that our lovely boys here are more powerful than ever before. And, oh, look at all of this loot left behind. Fantastic. Oh, so much gold. Okay, I've located a potential giant learning stone to give us a huge amount of experience, so we're going to try this fight out. It is a much, much harder fight. However, it should be fine. We've got our lovely golden boys, and our golden boys are glorious immortals. Also, the wonderful governor is now more powerful than ever. 429 health and 30 damage, making him by far our strongest unit. Anyway, buffing up all of my lovely goldeny boys to make them even more powerful. And look at that, they are just leaving through the enemy at fantastic pace. The enemy has already had to call in their reinforcements, but we are doing fine. Our immortal golden earthens require a lot more than what the enemy is throwing at them in order to actually defeat them. And would you look at that, we've won another glorious fight. 13,000 experience gained. We're going to pick up another boost into learning. We've gained ourselves another red dragon, and we're going to pick up the learning stone for 6,000 more experience. Wonderful. So that additional red dragon is fantastic. We're going to be able to convert this bad boy into more raw stats for Gunvor. And you can probably see where this is going. Gunvor is getting more and more powerful, although the game is definitely still afoot. For the enemy AI that I occasionally see roaming around in the wilderness over here is absolutely giant. Now it's time for me to attempt to clear out all of these dragons down here and take control of the other palace of Urfan. It's going to be a very big fight because we've got some very angry dragons here, but don't worry, all should be fine. Right, let us start this glorious battle. Begin. Right, in the bone dragons go, and they are very angry and very dragony. If my own dragon is getting close to death, we just simply have to devour it straight away, but that's fine. I'm pretty sure it can get a few kills off before it goes, and yes, it is doing exactly that. Go on, bone dragon, go and kill these casters. Good stuff, my boy. Gunvor's even helping out. Gunvor, of course, being nice and powerful now, but still not as powerful as a giant red dragon. And yes, it is looking like this battle is a complete and total victory at the moment, so I'm going to have to cast Devour on my dragon. No, the battle ended before I could. Oh, beans. Oh, well, it's fine. We're going to put some more points into Dragonkin so that we can generate even more dragon points, and we've picked up the Palace of Urfan. 
as well as a whole bunch of money. Glorious stuff. So next week we should generate even more fantastic troops. A new week begins and more troops now become available to hire. Now there's a purse of gold up here that I do want to seize. Such an item would give me an extra income every day, which is a very, very jazzy thing indeed. So well, bam, up here we go. Let's let's simply fight this army. Even though it we are overwhelmingly powerful against them, we're still going to manually fight because I want to send out my dragon. So my dragon goes out, we're going to send him into combat straight away way deep into the enemy and then we're just going to devour him because well that's all we needed him to do he can just go over there one hit someone fly back into the back lines of their range units kill another one of them and then it's time for him to die rest in peace dragon you've served your job we're going to get probably another one after this battle anyway so that one dragon dies and you'll notice on the map we gained was that nine defense and nine attack a fantastic increase to our character's stats we're up to 40 defense and 37 attack now very very good indeed welcome back ladies and gentlemen it is week seven day three and an additional red army has just landed on the continent this army is looking rather decent to say the least they even have 10 to 20 war clowns on board which is uh, actually an incredibly terrifying unit now we are just one fight away from unlocking ourselves a red dragon so that's exactly what we're going to try and do i believe there's a relatively easy fight over here so we're just going to knock it out skip to the outcome gain ourselves a red dragon and loot all of this good stuff and hopefully this red army does not head over towards our capital oh, oh my goodness they'll just yes walking straight towards my capital okay how can they move that far right now I have quite a smart idea I basically summoned a small AI mini army and placed it in front of me which the AI is going to have to fight his way through before they can get to me at the same time I'm going to be defending our capital even more by recruiting some glorious mercenary clowns trust me they'll do a splendid job of defending the place and hopefully the red army are Oh, they've just summoned a second army. Two armies? Okay, right. Well, this is the AI attacking my deliberate slowdown force, which is actually a fantastic start. Here we go. We're just going to charge straight in towards the enemy. Honestly, any units we kill today, the better. Doesn't really matter if we lose a whole bunch of things. It's completely fine. We are just here to kill a few of their units, and so far we've managed to kill nothing. Oh my goodness. What is their military? How has nothing died? They lost nothing. They lost nothing and they're just attacking another one of my AI armies. Well, that's fine. Let's go for some of their weaker stuff. Let's go. Send battle. Come on, surely we can kill like a human or two. No. No, their humans aren't even dying. These are like basic halberdiers. We've killed eight of them and they've healed one. This is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, well, at least we're doing a little bit more damage this combat, I guess, but still, it's going to be a loss. We have killed some evil fire boys, though, so that is an advantage. Alright, and now time to send in a whole bunch of crossbow boys. Here we go. Potentially we've got a few more kills on our hands. Yes, we do! Damage is being done! Yes! Oh, wonderful, wonderful damage. Good stuff indeed. I'm not a fan of these survivors that they have. These survivors are evidently nigh impossible to kill and they regenerate. But hey, we killed a few of their units, so that's a good sign. The issue is by fighting them, we've actually, you know, given them some experience, but oh well, what can you do? Alright, now I'm going to take as large an army as possible and see if I can knock out the secondary red army. Potentially in doing so we're going to be able to massively improve our chances of winning overall. I will of course bring out my lovely little dragon and if the dragon dies it does not matter in the slightest. Go dragon, just have some fun. Yes, I believe in you. Just go stab some dudes, get some murdering in. You know what dragon, go for and kill their backlines. Yes, that's a splendid idea. Oh wait, no, you're actually dying. You're doing, you're getting kind of close but you are almost dead dragon. Come on, don't die. Kill the backlines. Okay, yes, our dragon friend is doing very, very, very very well indeed. And I've, and yes, it looks like the battle is over, which means it is time for us to devour our lovely dragon. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll just hit devour. Our dragon is dead. The enemy army has routed and we will hopefully gain some glorious experience from it. Yes, 12,000 experience gained. We'll get a level up. Now I'm also going to sink a point into destruction so that, you know, whenever any of our units die, there's a chance that they just explode and damage the enemy. And by killing that red dragon, we gain 10 more attack and 10 more defense. So that is very, very useful indeed. All of our our troops just got buffed and we're also 70% of the way to another dragon. Perfect stuff. Back to our town to defend. Now I'm going to summon a whole bunch of mercenary dwarves just because, you know, they're quite useful and we could do some chumpies. And I'm going to try and grab ourselves that additional dragon. So in order to do so, we're going to fight these little weird creatures. Well, bam, very easy fight. We've lost hardly anything because our army is so big. And that's another red dragon gained for us. Lovely stuff. Immediately we're going to head into an additional fight over here. And yes, the army is no match for us, but we're still going to control the 
fight because I want my red dragon out. I need my red dragon out because my red dragon is not only able to overwhelm the enemies, but we're also going to turn them into my power, attack, and defense stats. Said statistics are already doing very well as Gunvor is up to 749 health and does 67 damage. Also, because our stats have been increasing, our red dragons have been getting better. This red dragon is now up to 1624 health rather than 90. This is what their base stats are like in comparison, so yes, this is a massive improvement. Who knew all you needed for ultimate power was to eat a large quantity of a rare and endangered species? Right, there we go, dragon eaten, job done, player one. We also get 22,000 experience, which is wonderful. I will sink a point into estates, and we actually gained a whole bunch more dragon experience, yet we're already up to 69% of the way to the next one. And would you look at that, we're up to 62 defense and 58 attack. Oh my, oh my, oh my, that's starting to get rough rather good now, isn't it? So I'm actually feeling rather confident. I think even though, oh, is that an additional red army? Yep, there's okay, there's a third one now. Lovely. So we've killed two red armies and two more are still left running around our lands. That is fine. This army up here I'm very confident in defeating, but it's the one on the left that is more powerful. Now, because my commander's stats are getting so good, the units in our army are getting buffed more and more. For example, their health is currently being increased by 186% and their attack stats are being improved by 174%. This is making them incredibly hard to kill, and it's for that reason that even though this is a very overwhelmingly powerful army, I want to go murder the strongest force the AI has. But first, a quick fight against the AI, and yes, that is another dragon summoned. Lovely. Alright, time to end turn and start a new week. Oh, and these red factions are now trying to steal my mines. Right, that's it. We go to war. So after war we go. We go to beat up this red faction. We have a red dragon. They do not have a red dragon. This fight just makes logical sense. But the main reason it makes sense is because all of our units are buffed. For example, to demonstrate just how overly powered and buffed they are, take a look at the Caribou Elite. The Caribou Elite's base stats are 172 health and 16 damage. Our Caribou Elites, however, are at almost 500 health and 43 damage. This creature is incredibly powerful. At the same time, Gunvor is now up to 963 health and 91 damage. The boy is very powerful. Anyway, it's time for us to start this glorious fight. Go, my lovely man. Oh, also, yes, our red dragon is now up to 2,000 health, which, as you can imagine, really quite good. Oh, they just summoned a red dragon using their clowns. Their red dragon just absolutely evaporated my red dragon, so I need to kill my red dragon. Luckily, their red dragon is... <gasps> Damn it, it inherited the stats. No. No. Oh, beans. They're their red dragon inherited the stats of my red dragon and then was buffed by their commander. This is very bad indeed. I just gave them the strongest unit in the bloody game. Well, luckily we have our reinforcements coming in, so it's time for us to send in our own clowns as well as some survivors. Boys. Actually, just the Midas boys. Right, go Midas boys. Turn the enemy into money, you unstoppable glorious bastards. I'm going to try and target the enemy dragon and decrease its health. I don't think that spell even fired, but that's fine. I tried. I'm going to boost up all of our golden earthen so they do more damage and attack faster now we need to bring out even more reinforcements okay oh yes we are now turning the tide and look at how many units on the battlefield have just been turned to gold there's a lot of money to be found in this particular fight okay this fight has gone uh, rather well however their dragon is down we have managed to do it we've managed to do it ladies and gentlemen they are defeated player won and we killed our own dragon meaning we gain in strength and also we're up to level 18 cool I'm going to pick up another perk in devour that's 10 attack and 10 defense which we just gained as well as 97 7% of the way towards our next dragon. Oh yes, we've done a splendid job indeed. Our commander is now up to 72 defense and 69 attack. Nice. Now, there is still a red army nearby to us, so uh, yes, we're going to go and murder it. They're just a level 8 character, but still, I need to put them down as soon as possible. So in go my lovely golden orphans who are going to evaporate the opponents. They are now up to 269 health and 25 damage, so as you can imagine, a little bit more powerful than what the opponent can muster. Oh, they are just doing a splendid job of cleaning house. They are pretty much unstoppable. Meanwhile, how's Gunvor doing? Gunvor's up to 1,000 health and 120 damage. Good job, Gunvor. My goodness, you are so much more powerful than their hero. Anyway, that's another glorious good fight won. 14,000 experience gained and a dragon. Right now, time to fight a real dragon in order to steal its chest. Oh, and apparently they're no match for us. Well, it's fine. I want to do this fight anyway because I need to eat my own dragon. So, bam, start the battle. Dragon, go fight their dragons. Their dragons aren't as good as ours, but hey, they have a lot of them. I can't even see my own dragon in the dragon pile. 
I just presume he's having a grand old time. Oh yes, he is having a grand old time. So splendid job done, battle one, I have to kill my own dragon. And what do we get from our stats from killing our own lovely dragon? We get 13 defense and 13 attack now, fantastic. And immediately from just winning that fight, we've created another dragon. Oh yes, oh yes, this endless spiral is going. Oh, it's really going. So I'm very happy with my commander satchel power level. So we're going to now send him after the AI rather than actually defending our own lands anymore. Now we're going to start heading towards the AI. They are certainly going to be quite far away, but it's okay. I feel confident because I'm leaving behind a very nice defensive force of troops in order to defend just in the unlikely occasion that, you know, they decide to march an army on my capital whilst I'm the other side of the map. Anyway, Gunfor's doing a fantastic job and he's just going to be cleaving through the enemy here. Our base Red Dragon's health is only meant to be 646 and he's only meant to do 38 damage. However, he's not up to 2,300 health and instead of 38 damage, he's doing 100 29. Yes, we are getting ever so slightly a little bit overpowered. Anyway, through you go through the wall, dragon. Yep, you can just literally breathe fire through the wall and one hit all of the enemy units. Wow, okay, this is a little bit powerful. Climb over the wall, dragon, and go and murder their backline. Anyway, it's now time for us to devour our dragon because the battle is almost over, so goodbye dragon, thank you very much, tasty tasty boy. I will now be harvesting your abilities, thank you. So, one dragon dead, 13 more defense, 13 more attack. Now, I'm also going to be buffing the heck out of our hero by turning him into a combat god. In doing so, he's going to be able to basically grow in size, health and damage, just to, you know, make him even more unstoppable on the field of battle. But I'm currently feeling very, very, very confident in our abilities, and oh look at that red army that we just defeated has immediately respawned and completely regained all of its strength. That seems balanced to me. Anyway, right, let's go put it down again. This time we have ourselves another dragon. This dragon is very powerful. We have Gunvor. Gunvor's now up 2,000 health. Honestly, all of our units are looking rather good indeed. I'm going to send in my lovely dragon and actually, you know what, I'm just going to devour him as well as a few Crystalliuses because I could do with the experience and power and I'm pretty sure Gunvor can now solo this entire military force. Go my glorious men, go, fight valiantly and oh wow, they've really buffed up their archers. Well, that's fine for I can summon in a new wave of battle clowns and actually I can also evolve all of my carvers that I just summoned into the fight. Yes, let's evolve them into the next tier of units. They've become more powerful than ever before. Go, my glorious men, fight for me. Yes, glorious battle prowess. Oh, Fioni of the Crimson Order, you thought you could stand a chance against my battle army? You cannot. I have won this day. As well as 40,000 experience and 13 attack and 13 defense. Oh, and a new dragon. Lovely. So now every time the AI effectively is marching an army towards us, we're going to start murdering them because there's nothing they can do to stop us. Oh my goodness, what's this? Is this the Red Fort? I think we've had accidentally just wandered into their homelands. Yes, they've got another army here, although it's not very big. But of course, if I end my turn, it's just going to increase massively in size. Yes, look at that. It's oh, so much larger than it previously was. Well, that's fine. I still have a red dragon to consume, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And then I'll see just how efficiently I can actually murder my opponent. This devour skill is just so horrifically overpowered because sure, at the start, it's not the best. But after a while, we've just turned our commander into an absolutely unstoppable giga chad that can just zoom around the map and murder everyone. Wait, hang on, there's another red army. A red army is just right next to our capital. What? What? Right, I'm killing this red army next to their capital. It has to die. Sure, they're able to use their walls as defensive structures, but it does not matter. Gunvor is doing 443 damage, which means Gunvor should be able to just hit down the wall in one hit. Yes, he can. Gunvor, go, my boy, go. Oh my goodness, Gunvor, please. There are these things called war crimes you need to be aware of, and um, you're kind of doing them. You just one hit the enemy general. Gunvor, please. Please! Okay, well, uh, Gunvor has no chill whatsoever. He's able to one-hit even these high-level dragon slayers that just got spawned in. Oh, Gunvor, you magical boy. You magical, magical boy. And you, you've hardly taken any damage. You're still up to on, like, three quarters of your life. Good stuff, Gunvor. Who knew having 3,000 health would be such a great benefit? Well, great job, Gunvor. That's another glorious, successful battle. You even get to level up. And oh my, it looks like we've actually captured their town. Wonderful. Well, there's a very real chance 
once we've just accidentally completely destroyed the game and, well, won it without actually having to do much fighting. But in order just to demonstrate just how truly powerful we've become, I'm going to bring a tiny little fairy along with my hero, and we're going to fight this giant stack of over 200 units. It is not looking good in our favour. There are two golden drakes on the enemy team, as well as a whole bunch of trogskers and high-level gorgons. However, we have a few advantages. Advantage number one, Gunvor is up to 3,000 health and does 525 damage. Advantage number three, we have a red dragon that's up to 3,000 health and does 174 damage. We also have an anima. Now, an anima normally has 23 health and does 4 damage, one of the worst units in the game. Our anima, 122 health and 20 damage. That's pretty good. That's basically half a dragon. Anyway, Gunvor, in you go, my friend. Just charge and absolutely one-hit every single enemy. Yes, you're doing great. And our red dragon as well has managed to one-hit one of their dragons and has almost killed the other. Great job. And now we're going to try and defeat a whole bunch of gorgons, which, yes, will occasionally petrify my dude. However, if he gets a single hit off, they all die. All right, this fight has gone fantastically well, so it's time for me to naturally eat my dragon. So, dragon, chomp, 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 you're dead. Gunvor, continue the great work. You're now doing 840 damage. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> 840 damage is enough to kill every base creature in the game. The highest base creature health in the game, 646. Uh, Gunvor, that's no problem for him. Absolutely no problem. Oh, wow. Splendid job, Gunvor. You've won the day and gained even more stats as a result and a free dragon because you deserved it. I don't really know what the AI is going to do here. I have kind of stolen one of their towns. They have got two very large armies that they're dead set on trying to take through the land. And you know what? They might be able to do it. They've got 75 parrots. And you know what? Parrots, surprisingly effective it seems. But in order to truly show just how powerful I am, this entire army that just took down a garrison is now going to fight Gunvor and a single red dragon. Uh, the red dragon exists solely so that Gunvor could potentially eat it if he was hungry and now we're going to just simply fight. Go my friend. What I'm going to also do is give Gunvor the effect of bloodlust. This is going to give him more health, more attack power, more attack speed and everything. And there we go. Look at him. Look at him. Just one hitting his way through this entire military force. Gunvor, you're amazing. Go, my friend, go. He's not really able to be killed by melee units, but ranged units are definitely going to inconvenience him. And, oh, would you look at that? It looks like our dragon's about to die, which means we need to consume our boy. Right, devour him. Use his power for you, Gunvor. Yes, Gunvor, go. Gunvor is now up to 5,700 health and doing 1,000 base damage. Fight, Gunvor, fight. Alright, he's doing good, but uh, this fight is going to probably take a long while. Gunvor, I'm going to need you to go through their back lines and see if you can kill their range stuff. Okay, it doesn't seem like you can do that. Fine. No, you've done it. Go, Gunvor. Fight the back lines. You're incredibly low health, Gunvor, but there's a chance you can still win this fight. And honestly, that's amazing. Oh, they just summoned a bunch of parrots. Well, sadly, that is a defeat. Gunvor did die. However, he has killed over 200 people in the process. So, good job, Gunvor. Oh, you also gained a whole bunch of experience. Wonderful. Now, that does mean you teleport all the way home, but that's completely fine because honestly, in my opinion, you are ready to take on the entire world. Right, I personally believe Gunvor is ready. Gunvor does not exactly have much of a military force. However, he doesn't need one. He is simply just that powerful. So I'm going to go send him off to clear out some of these tiny little AI stacks that aren't particularly too intimidating because, well, he's up to 4,000 health now. So Gunvor, just literally barrel your way into the enemy. Right, bam. He can just one hit and there we go. They all die. Gunvor's one minor weakness is he can still be killed. However, he just does an insane quantity of damage. But overall, splendid job. Easy victory. All right, we've created ourselves another dragon, which is wonderful. And oh my goodness, one of the lovely red armies has marched its way even closer to us. Lovely. Gunvor, go, my friend. Gunvor, why are you so big? You look absolutely huge in comparison to their commanders now. My goodness, are you, like, compensating for something, Gunvor? All right, let's start this battle. Gunvor, get to work and just do your thing. And by your thing, I know it means just murder them. Okay, well, yep, they're literally already dead. Fine, we're going to have to eat this dragon immediately. And that's a GG. Dragon consumed, fight had, 12 attack and 12 defense gained. Gunvor, you're up to 163 and 157. Wonderful. This means all of Gunvor's troops are currently receiving almost 500% increase to their health, which, as you can imagine, is very beneficial indeed. Right, because Gunvor is so good now, I'm going to uh, separate his entire military force, excluding the dragon, into a separate pile, and then we're going to send just 
Gunvor and the Dragon into this stack of 150 units because I believe in Gunvor and Gunvor believes in me and that's honestly all I need. 6,200 health he has. He's great. Sure, they can, you know, teleport us around a bit, but that's fine because apparently we can spawn in Anima now have 155 health. So, uh, yeah, things are looking quite good indeed. The Adventures of the Red Dragon and Gunvor the War Criminal. They're going great. Sure, the balance of power doesn't look like it's in our favor, but um, this is actually, you know, pretty much already over. There we go. They're all routing. Time for me to eat that red dragon friend. Glorious victory for Gunvor. Now, time for a proper fight. Look at this. This enemy army is much stronger than yours. You may want to reconsider attacking them. Attack anyway. I have Gunvor. I do not need any more assistance. Yes, they have, you know, Venom, which is bad. That means we'll take a lot of damage. It does not matter, for Gunvor is mighty and powerful. And I will create a duplicate copy of Gunvor. This is smaller gun- This is a miner. This is a Gunvor. You're telling me, sorry, this tiny miner is equivalent to the power of Gunvor. Game, you are just being silly. Right, Gunvor, get bloodlusted. You now do even more damage and uh, can just, you know, breeze through the enemy. Yes, you are getting poisoned, but poison is, you know, only temporary. I can also summon some temporary imps. Imps aren't powerful creatures. However, when led by Gunvor, they have 200 health and do, 40, <laughs> and do 47 damage. Hang on a second, Gunvor. These imps are quite good. They're meant to be leveled like zero terrible boys, but hey, fine. Let's see what your mana elementals look like. Oh my goodness, 980 health and 108 damage. Okay, yeah, they're good. They're good. Oh, they are very good, Gunvor. Right, Gunvor, um, I don't think this is as much of a glaring defeat as the game thought it was going to be. Uh, this seems like a total victory to me. Good job, Gunvor. That was all you needed to win. Uh, wow, literally, their enemy army ran against a empty air wall and died because, yes, I had no units. Fantastic victory. Oh, there we go. We have victory. We have victory. The enemy army conceded, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we've done it. Fantastic. Glorious total victory is ours. Now I just have to turn Gunvor into even more of a crazy powerhouse. So I'll be back in a little moment. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I think naturally it's time for us to do an ultimate test and send our glorious hero against a colossal army of up to potentially 800 units. Here we go. We're up against an army of 400 units. The balance of power is very much not in our favor. However, Gunvor has been improved a bit. Gunvor is now up to 62,000 health. He does 16,508 damage. And his lovely red dragon companion now is up to 12,000 health and does 755 damage. So yes, we're going to start this battle and send my lovely boy in. At the same time, I'm going to give him some bloodlust just to boost him up some more. And well, bam, he now does 20,000 damage. So that just destroyed the wall and uh, away he goes. Go, my lovely man, go. Now, annoyingly, every time we kill a mushroom, they split into two mushrooms. However, it matters little for we can fight strong. Um, and also we've summoned some elementals in. Oh, wow, these spirited fires, they have 1,200 health. That's, um, that's kind of incredible. Well, nonetheless, the game still says we're going to lose. So, uh, we just have to continue fighting. Go, my glorious, glorious bear boys. Okay, they're really not doing a great job, these poor little opponents of ours. Okay, I'm going to increase the health of Governor. Maybe that will help. Yes, it did. He's up to 80,000 health now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, even if uh, pretty much every single unit in this game hit Governor, it would take them about half an hour to um, even kill him. The man is just unstoppable. He moves faster. He is just better. He's built different. He is unstoppable. Look at this man go. Look at this glorious man go. Well, that's total and utter complete victory. Fantastic work, Gunvor. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is a perfectly balanced demonstration of just how uniquely designed this wonderful game is. Gunvor's stats are now up into the 600 category, which is, you know, just a little bit into the imbalanced aspect of this game. It means each and every one of our units are having their health increased by 1,899%, and their attacks are being boosted by 1,900%. This is perfectly balanced, to say the least. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the wonderful adventure of Gunvor. If you've enjoyed watching it today, then make sure to give this video a like and hop on down into the comment section and give me a more difficult challenge or video game that you'd like to see me break. No difficulty is too much and no challenge is too small. For I am British and consequently incredibly petty and overpowered. So give me guidance, you glorious YouTube comment section. Anyway, as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our amazing YouTube channel members and Patreon. Seriously, your funds are very, very useful indeed. So thank you very much. And hey, if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, well, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every
every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.